friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, and if you follow me on Instagram, you know we're approaching that time of year where I do my annual pantry challenge. During the months of January and February, I purpose to spend zero dollars on food um, with the goal of kind of using up everything that we've worked so hard to preserve over the growing season. And I do this for lots of reasons. And why don't I share with you the benefits of doing a pantry challenge? And then I'll talk to you about how we prepare for a challenge and how you can join me this year, either on Instagram or here on YouTube. So, the first reason to do a pantry challenge is obviously to save money. If you go two months without going to the grocery store, you're saving money not buying food. Also, you stop yourself from a lot of those impulse purchases that happen when you go to the store. So, saving money is the primary reason for the challenge. But another big reason, our second reason, is it gives us the uh, opportunity to cycle through the things in our pantry. When you put up a lot of food, or you try to keep a well-stocked pantry and focus on long-term food storage, you end up with a lot of bulk grains, a lot of frozen produce and meat and canned stuff that you have to find a way to cycle through. There isn't an indefinite shelf life on some of these things. And so doing this pantry challenge is an opportunity for me to use up the 25 pounds of dried beans that I've bought, cycle through them, use them, and then I can replenish them sometime next year. Things like rice, things like wheat berries, you know, you want to be using that stuff and cycling through. And then obviously the jars of food that I can. I used to find that if I didn't purposely try to use the stuff up during the year, there were some items that would just sit and it might be two or three years later and I find these things in the back of the pantry shelves. And while they're still good to eat after several years, they're not optimal flavor and texture. Those foods do degrade over time in the jars and they're just better when you eat them that first year after you can them. So a pantry challenge is an opportunity to go through and use all of the food that you've worked so hard to preserve and to make sure that you clear out space in the pantry for the coming growing season where you're going to, Lord willing, <laughs> fill the jars back up and fill the pantry up again for winter. Another, another reason that we enjoy doing a pantry challenge is to reduce waste. Like I said, you're cycling through things, you're using it, so you're not going to find that things get stuck in the bottom of the freezer and you end up having to feed it to the animals because it ended up with freezer burn or something like that. And then also, you produce less trash. I find that every year that I do this pantry challenge, the amount of trash that we're taking out to our curb decreases simply because we're just not going to the store and buying convenience foods and foods that are packaged in a lot of plastic and and things like that and so we just don't produce a lot of waste and that's a wonderful benefit I love starting off the year on that foot with that mindset that we're gonna reduce our food waste we're gonna make use everything that we have and we're just gonna be a lot more mindful about what we're consuming a fourth reason we really love doing this challenge is because it keeps us out of the stores. Like I said, when you're in the store, you spend less money, but also January and February are typically the time of year where I don't like dragging seven children through the grocery store. It's cold and flu season and it's snowy out, so I don't want to get in the car and, and be on the roads when it's cold like that. And so this is an opportunity to just stay out of the stores. And this year, more than ever, with everything going on with sickness in the world, we just find it a great blessing to not have to deal with grocery stores for two months. A fifth benefit of doing a pantry challenge, especially during this time of year for us in Ohio in January and February, those are the months where I'm in my heavy garden planning. I'm trying to figure out what I want to plant in my garden for 2021. And so going through a pantry challenge and trying to eat off of our food stores gives me an opportunity to see areas where I may have fallen short of my food preservation goals in previous years um, or as my family is growing. This year I may notice that, wow, the amount of applesauce I preserved the previous year isn't enough now that my kids are getting bigger and they're growing more, so I need to make sure I preserve more of that next year or I need to make sure I make more garden space for greens or carrots or whatever it is that I feel like I really missed out on having enough of during this year's pantry challenge. So it's a great time of year to do it as you're thinking about next year's growing goals. 
And then the final kind of bonus benefit of doing a pantry challenge is I find every year when I do this, I lose weight. I think two years ago, I lost about 10 pounds during that two-month pantry challenge. Um, last year, I was pregnant, so I didn't really track weight loss or anything like that. But it's just because you're being more mindful about food and food waste and snacking and things like that. You just find that you're consuming less unnecessary calories, and that's just another bonus, I guess, out of doing this. When I talk about my pantry challenge, one of the big questions I get from people is, does that really save you money? Because people assume that, well, you're just going to spend more money on groceries leading up to the challenge to make sure you're well stocked, and then you're probably just going to end up spending more money after the challenge to restock everything in your pantry. So isn't it all a wash? And to that I say, no. So let me show you how we prepare financially for this challenge. I have a set grocery budget every month of the year, and that is I spend about $600 to $700 on groceries for our family of nine. That's my budget. That's what I allow myself to spend in the grocery store or through my Azure Standard bulk grocery orders. Now, that doesn't include things like some bulk produce um, purchases that I do throughout the year and things like that. But my grocery budget, what I would be spending in the store or through Azure Standard, is $600 to $700 every month. And so during the months of the pantry challenge, I am not spending that. So it saves me anywhere from $1,200 to $1,400 not buying anything. Now, leading up to the challenge, I don't increase my budget in the month of December to prepare for the challenge. I'm still spending that same amount. And then in March, once the challenge is over, I will continue to only spend that same amount. Anything that we ran out of during the course of the pantry challenge will be put on a list and kind of prioritized. And in March, when I do my bulk orders through Azure or I go to the grocery store, the stuff that are essentials that we ran out of will be on the top of the priority list to make sure that I've restocked and added to my grocery list. And then slowly throughout the years, we rebuild our, our stash and then we're ready for the next winter, but I don't change my budgeting at all. This is purely savings. A lot of times you find when you go grocery shopping, if you really think hard about it, many of the items you buy are impulse buys. They just sound good in the moment or they're convenience foods that you don't necessarily need, but you're buying just because they sound good. And taking two months off of doing that allows you to focus on what you already have in your house that you need to use up that would maybe go to waste if you didn't intentionally set out to try to use it and it saves you money and so um, I guess that's my answer to that question it really does save me money and um, we're, our budgeting system is, is the same we don't um, change it because of the pantry challenge another question I always get whenever I do this pantry challenge is well aren't you scared of using up all of your food stores and this year especially I've gotten that question considering everything going on in the world and the possibility of food shortages due to disruptions in the supply chain. And to that I say, um, no, I'm really not worried about it because the things I'm using up, the produce that's back here on the shelves, the meat that's in our freezers, those kinds of things, Lord willing, will just be replenished the next year. The reason I work so hard to preserve these items is so that we can use them up and enjoy them. I don't want to hoard these items. <laughs> I, I want to use them so that next year I can make space to grow it all again because we enjoy the growing process and putting up all of this food. And so I think in the first year I ever did this pantry challenge, it originated out of this idea that I had been hoarding food for years I had been worried that if I used up all of my jars of a certain item that I wouldn't be able to replenish it. And so these jars would just sit and not get used and eventually be wasted because as I mentioned in the beginning, they're, they're not at their peak flavor, you know, two years after I can them. And so you, um, setting out intentionally that first year on a pantry challenge to say, I trust that if I use this stuff up, there will be an opportunity to refill the jars again. It was freeing, and I was finally able to enjoy this food and all of the work I had put into to preserving it. And it's great. It just It just keeps the food cycling through the house so it stays the freshest. And even the dried pantry goods that we buy, this is a great way to not waste it because it's getting used 
Those items do not typically have an indefinite shelf life. They will go rancid if they sit there for too long. Things like bulk nuts, things like bulk beans or whatever it is, you do want to use those up. And so this is a great way to, to do that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how I prepare for the pantry challenge. Um, as I mentioned before, we don't prepare by going out and stocking up on a bunch of things. That kind of defeats the purpose, not just financially, but also one of the goals is to see the areas of food storage that we might be not doing a good job in. If there were an unintentional pantry challenge that we had to undergo at some point, if Adam lost his job or there for some reason we didn't have money in the budget to buy food for a month, I would like to know the areas that were weak in in our food storage. So not setting out to prepare and buy a bunch of stuff to stock up really gives you a good idea of um, things that you really should work harder in the future to keep in your house in bigger quantities. So we don't prepare in that way, but I do prepare by getting organized. So let me show you how we get organized for the uh, challenge. So to get organized for the challenge, the first thing you need to do is to take an inventory of everything that you have in your house, all of the food, and you want to do it in your pantry, you want to do it in your freezers, all of your cupboards, your fridge, anywhere that you keep your food, and you want to kind of get a big picture of everything that you have in the house. Now, you don't necessarily have to tally mark and say, okay, I have a hundred jars of tomato sauce and I have this, you know, this much of that item. If you know you have a large quantity of something, then you just keep it in your mind that I have a lot of that. You don't have to get extremely specific, but you just want to get an idea of everything that you have in the house so you can start planning for the meals for your next couple months. So what I do is I categorize all of my inventory into different sections. So I'm going to have my protein in one category, everything in my house that I would consider a protein source. That would be my beans, all of my meat, any eggs that I've preserved, lentils, nuts and seeds, nut butter, all of those kinds of things I'm going to list in one category as my protein. My second category that I'm going to have will be my starches. That'll include things like potatoes, rice, my wheat berries and flours. Um, noodles that I may have, anything that I would add to a meal as my starch. Then my third category of my inventory is going to be my vegetables. Anything in my house that's a veggie, <laughs> freezer, canned, dehydrated, all of it is going to go on the list in that category. My fourth category is going to be my fruit and that'll be anything from jams and jellies to canned fruit to frozen fruit to any fresh fruit we may have in the house like storage apples and also things like pie filling I'm going to count as fruit and I'll, sh I'll show you why in a second. Other categories of pantry staples are going to be my sweeteners. I'm going to separate all of that out into one category. That's going to be my maple syrup, my honey, my uh, molasses. What else would that be? sugar, obviously, um, and any fruit syrups that I might have. That goes into a separate category. I want to know how much of that I have because if I run out of one item, like sugar, I want to know what I have that I can kind of substitute and how much of that I have in the house. Your fats are a really important category. I'll talk about why in other videos, but you want to have a separate category for all of your cooking fats and oils. So anything from lard to olive oil, coconut oil, whatever it is you keep on your in your house as a cooking fat. It could be butter if you're a dairy family that freezes butter. Put that in a category so you can see how much of that that you have. Your baking supplies will be another category. That'll be things like baking powder, baking soda, your yeast for bread making, cocoa powder, those kinds of things will go in another category. And then another category will be snacks. That's all of the items that you use in your house not to make meals per se, but that would help fill bellies when they're hungry for a snack. Things like popcorn. Um, and then finally, your last category is going to be miscellaneous items like condiments and, and things like that that you keep on hand. Okay, so I've made my inventory and I have it all categorized. Why is that helpful? Well, for me when I meal plan, I, every lunch or dinner that I make has starts with the protein source. So I have my list now of all the possible protein sources that I have in the house that I could use to make a meal. 
Then I always add a starch, so I have a list of all of those options, and then I add a vegetable, I have a list of that, and then for some meals I might make a dessert using the fruit, like a pie or a cobbler or something like that, or that fruit sometimes will be added to the meal for a lunch just as a side dish, you know, like some sliced pears or peaches or something like that. So when I set out, when I'm preserving food for the year, my goal is to always have enough fruits and vegetables and starches and proteins to handle those two meals for every day during the non-growing season. When I set out on this pantry challenge, obviously there's going to be approximately 60 days in the two months, and so I need to make sure I have 120 meals worth of fruits, vegetables, protein, and starches. That's why this is helpful for me. I can go through now in my freezer and start writing amounts next to these items, or if I don't want to keep an exact tally because it's really hard to count when you've got hundreds of jars of something or whatever, um, what you can do is highlight the things that you have a lot of, or vice versa, highlight the things that you don't have a lot of that you need to make sure you ration out. This list is just the beginning stage for me to get organized so that I know what I'm going to be able to do for my lunches and dinners over the course of that 60 days. Breakfasts in my house are very different. They're often very carb heavy. We do something like a pancake. We might add a protein for a couple meals a day, like a, a bacon or a sausage or something like that. But during the winter months, eggs are not plentiful, and I don't have fresh greens, so I can't make my scrambled eggs and greens like I would make in the summer. So we do more carb-heavy foods that would be relying on that starch category, and that's why I keep a lot of bulk greens in the house, like oats and flour, for those breakfasts. And, and I'm okay with them not um, getting vegetables or whatever with their breakfast because I know that they're getting them during their lunches and dinners and that's okay. If you look at the course of the day, they're getting everything they need. That breakfast can be carb heavy and delicious and give them the energy they need to start the day. So if you're new to doing a pantry challenge, this is why that inventory is going to be so helpful for you. If you tally everything up that you have in the house and you realize I don't have enough veggies stored up in my house to make it one or two months providing two meals a day of vegetables for my children. Obviously, you're not going to not provide vegetables for your children. You're setting yourself up for failure on the challenge. So you need to head into the challenge with a realistic goal. Maybe instead, you're going to allow yourself to just buy fresh vegetables every week. That's the only grocery spending you're going to do. Or maybe if it's dairy or something like that, you're going to you're going to set a rule for your challenge where you're only allowed to buy dairy. Or maybe you just spent, um, set a small dollar amount that I normally spend $100 a week on groceries. I'm going to go through this challenge only spending $25 a week and see how I can do. So having this inventory can, can make it realistic for you. Once you have a picture of all the food in your house, you know what's possible for you to do for your particular family. And that's the great thing about this pantry challenge, the Three Rivers Challenge that I do on Instagram is that anybody can join. We're all there to encourage one another in whatever capacity we're able to do the challenge. If you're, like I said, a dairy family, buy your dairy, obviously. You want to provide that for your children. If you're someone that really likes to have um, a fresh salad every week, if you're a vegan or, or something like that where salads are a main component of your diet and you can't grow that in the winter, allow yourself to buy your salad fixings and just don't buy the other things. But the goal is just to reduce your spending, reduce your waste, cycle through the food that's in the back of your freezer, the back of your cupboards, and just um, we're going to encourage one another to do that. So over the course of this challenge, the rest of December and in the months of January and February, I'm going to be sharing some videos with you on some different topics that have to do with doing a pantry challenge, like food substitutions that are really helpful, um, what are some recipes and tricks in the kitchen for making uh, food prep during a challenge go really smoothly? And things like kids. How do you deal with kids on a food challenge and getting them to cooperate with this and, and be excited about doing something like this? Because my kids really do look forward to this every year. It's just part of our family schedule. They know that in January and February, we don't go to the grocery store. And so how do I prepare them to, to take that news well and to be excited about the meals that we're making during the challenge? 
Okay, so right now we're in the beginning of December, and as I mentioned, we're in those planning stages, so I'm making my inventory, and I'm getting ready to do my very last Azure Standard order, and we're going to be doing our last grocery trip coming up here soon, and then we won't be spending any money on groceries this year. It's going to work out to be for about 73 days, and so that requires, like I said, some organization and some forethought. You've seen kind of how I do that. And then the things that I'll focus on buying this grocery trip, as I mentioned, I won't increase my budget at all, but I am going to make sure that I have all of the baking supplies that I'm going to need in the house. You really, in a pantry challenge, do not want to run out of things like baking powder and yeast <laughs> and the essentials that you're going to use to be making your breads and, and other items for your family. So I'll make sure to include those on my grocery orders and otherwise, I'm just excited to use all of this food that we worked so hard to preserve during the year. So if this is something that sounds exciting to you, if you're looking for a way to save some money, to cycle through some of your food storage that's been sitting there for a couple years and you know you just need to find a way to get it out of the house, or if you want to learn some ways to uh, waste a little less food in the kitchen, what are some ways that you can reuse items, use leftovers in a way that's still tasty, that children will eat, those kinds of things, I hope you'll follow along with me. Uh, both here on YouTube and on my account, Three Rivers Homestead on Instagram. I have in my highlights on my Instagram page all of the meals. I document every breakfast, lunch, and dinner I make through the food challenge, and I save it in my highlights there, and you can see the last two years' worth of meals there right now, and I'll be sharing them throughout this year as well. And it's just really fun. If you follow the hashtag over there, if Instagram will let you follow hashtags, they've been kind of weird about that lately. <laughs> but if you follow the hashtag over there, you can see everybody who has joined in and is participating. And we get hundreds of other people over the last couple of years that have, have wanted to join us in this challenge. And it's really fun to encourage one another and to see the creative ways that people are substituting foods and using up canned foods that they preserved. You get some really great ideas for recipes and shortcuts and all, all sorts of fun things. So we hope that you'll join us. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I can address those in future videos on the Pantry Challenge. But for now, that's it. I hope you're having a blessed day. I'll talk to you later, friends. Bye.